my name is Margaret O'Dell, and I read 16 books last month, and I would have put it in the title, but it seems redundant at this point, because this is the third time I've done it. So, because I read 16 books, let's jump right in. Any and all review books that I read will have their links down in the description below to check them out if you're interested in more than the little bit I can say about them here. First up, I read Vices and Virtues by Beatrice Di Soprantu. This is an adult contemporary all about a young woman named Christella who's working as a dom in a professional dungeon. Not like full sexy times, but something just shy of that. And the title refers to the seven deadly sins and the seven adjective virtues uh, that most people accept and kind of displaying them. This did the thing that I'm realizing is a pet peeve of mine in books, which is trying to give all of these mini monologues about society in, in philosophical terms, but giving so many of them that it kind of all falls flat after a while. And the characters were interesting, but I don't know that I connected with them that much. And while the backstories are really intriguing, not a lot happens in the present day plot. However, if you like that kind of philosophical look into things without any real erotic sexy times, uh, then you'll probably be interested in that one. Next up, I read Matters of Convenience by Roy L. Pickering Jr. This isn't so much a romance as much as it is an adult contemporary all about relationships and how messy they are uh, revolving around three young adults uh, all of whom are black and the author is as black as well so it is own voices if you're interested in that and it does play uh, somewhat of an effect on the storyline especially when they talk about their careers uh, essentially you have this woman her longtime best friend who's pining for her and this strange man she meets uh, almost accidentally and how it all comes apart. It's not a standard love triangle. I was worried that it would be, but it's not, thankfully. This is also not a story with a guaranteed happy ending, and you may come out of it not liking some characters as much. I know I stopped liking some characters by the end, but I think that's the point. Anyway, uh, so if you like that kind of thing, especially if it's own voices, check that one out. Up next was The Monsters of Music by Rebecca F. Kenny. This is a YA gender-bent retelling of Phantom of the Opera, where our phantom is a young girl who is one of the Lannan side, a kind of Irish fae type who must find a protege to funnel their magic through. Otherwise, it will basically make them explode. I assume. So she goes to the singing competition as Leanne Inside Magic is always creative based to find a protege. She finds a lovely soft boy. I loved him uh, to basically train and put her magic into and might start falling for him and some things start happening. She is annoyed that she can't use her own powers and instead must find someone else and she's kind of fighting against the laws of her own people and it's also good schlocky like reality show uh contest fun and as someone that does occasionally watch the voice i really like that aspect <laughs> next up was one of the few physical books i read this month and that is the deep by river solomon i got a novella from bookish first this is an own voices story once again uh written by a black non-binary author all about this african mermaid race called the Wajinru who are descendants from the pregnant African women that were thrown over the side of slave ships and it talks about how they're struggling both to keep hold of their own history as the historian of their race basically holds the entirety's history and it is dragging her down and she wants to be free of it and it's that argument of is it worth holding on to the memories, hold on to who you are, even if it's painful and hard? This is also based off of a song, uh, two songs actually, because one song was a cover of the other. And I did have the physical copy of this. However, it is currently boxed up and waiting to be shipped out because I mentioned in the review that this felt like it was a message by a member of the black community for the black community. At least that's the feeling I got. And as... I am not a member of that community. I sent out a call in that video saying, if you'd be interested, if you are a black book reviewer, let me know. And someone said, hey, not only am I a black re book reviewer, but I've actually had my eye on that book for a while. So I'm going to be sending that off to Canada whenever I can finally get around to like actually going to the post office and paying all the fees to send something to Canada. But I definitely, definitely would suggest checking that out. It's a novella, so it's fairly short. And oh, FF Romance. Actually, more like a WLW romance because the the gender uh, standards in this book are not a binary, which I also very much enjoyed. 
Up next, yet another review book, A Footstep Echo by J.D. Sanderson. This is a time travel mystery all about an elderly man named Bernard who comes across this strange woman who seems down on her luck. She has suffered severe head trauma, so she doesn't remember who she is, and she can't really speak well, and he must help her. But the one thing she does remember how to do is time travel. So he ends up getting pulled into all these different times. And then the discovery of who she is was whew, a little bit much. Now, I loved Bernard as protagonist. I need more sci-fi with elderly protagonists. He was so good. So cute in that, like, old man kind of way. But halfway through, once you had the reveal, though the reveal was awesome, the second half kind of lagged a little bit for me. And it felt like Bernard's place in the story had to kind of be shoehorned in and wasn't quite as justified as it had been before. But I still enjoyed it. And if you like sci-fi, you will still like that as well. And again, review in the description. Up next was a book I probably won't be talking about a lot because it was my palette cleanser. And that is Boneyard Ridge by Paula A. Graves. Nope, just Paula Graves, not A. Graves. Whatever. I read this basically because I've been reading too many review books and I was starting to get burned out. So this is about a woman who is in danger and needs protection and a man comes to get rid of protection and they fall in love. So, like, the, the plot of, like, 99% of Harlequin, rom Harlequin romances. I can speak, I swear. Anyway, <laughs> I didn't, like, adore it. I didn't hate it. It served its purpose. I think I read it in, like, a day, maybe less. So, you know, it was whatever. Up next was the exact opposite of a palate cleanser to let your mind wander, and that is The Battle for Metagore by D.L. Stewart. This is a very thick with two C's high fantasy, about 500 pages, all about this land called Metagore and the different factions within in it, the leader that has been ruling for like 600 years has died and they're electing a new leader, but the Grand Dukes that head each of the little separate parts aren't happy about it and a couple of them declare war and war ensues. Now I mentioned that I had been looking for a nice thick fantasy to sink my teeth into, however this one was almost too thick in that it had so much world building to do that even with 500 pages it still didn't feel like enough. On top of that there was an entire war. There were so many characters that there's only like a very small handful like none of you can count on your fingers that you actually got to know in any real way before they died. Uh, a lot of death, a lot of gore, meta gore. Yes I made that joke in the review and yes I'm making it again now. Fight me. Anyway, I loved the premise of it. A lot of the characters weren't great people, but I guess that kind of works in a war. Uh, however, for me, it was just I never felt like I had a grasp on everything fully. So I think I ended up giving it three stars. It is the beginning of a series. I probably will not be continuing with it. So if you're interested in that kind of ultra gory, ultra thick high fantasy, definitely check that one out. Up next was a spooky book because it was October and I wanted to read something that was in the spirit. And that is Cave's Cove, The Curse of Allie Mae by Aiden James. This is the first in the Cave's Cove series. It revolves around this couple who is going uh, vacationing for their anniversary when they uncover this strange bag in this strange cove that has Allie Mae's treasure stitched on the side. And while they intend to leave it behind, something compels the man to bring it back to his house and ghostly things happen as a result specifically to the oldest son and you find out that there may be a connection between the family and this ghost more than you thought a lot of gore a lot of uh one fairly uh, inventive death scene which i really appreciated but the ending kind of felt like it unraveled some things i was also really annoyed that they did introduce native american characters but they did it in that stereotypical horror ghost story way where it's like the Native American characters are really only introduced to use their Native American-y magic to save the white people and their ghost problems, which is fairly standard in horror. I feel like using some kind of like Native American like chant or something is used in so many ghost stories or horror stories to like solve things. So I wasn't the biggest fan of that. The ending kind of lost it a little bit for me, but it's a good standard spooky read. Up next was Home by David Cummer, and this is a hard piece of work to explain. I believe, let's go, a trippy, dystopian novella slash short story, depending on what your definitions of those things are. This is about a group of four teenagers who have left some bad place and are now looking for this place called home. Only home does not have the universal positive connotations that it does in our world. There are people trying to stop them. There are people saying like, hey, this isn't a good place. Uh, they're traveling through this 
unnamed wasteland. You don't know a lot. You know next to nothing. Uh, but you do know how horrible this place is because a lot of horrible things happen. Uh, homicidal children were probably my favorite. Uh, the ending was weird and trippy and the author <laughs> literally said in reply to my review, I have waited months for someone to call this book trippy, so obviously that's what he was going for, so good on you, sir. Uh, and this doesn't necessarily feel like a whole completed work as much as it feels like uh, a taste of what the author can do. It definitely felt like being dropped in at like the last third of a book as opposed to a whole completed work, but I really liked what I read. It, the the group dynamic was there, the heartache was there, the despair was there, which is what you want in a good dystopian. So definitely something to look into because you can read it in like less than a day. Next up was my favorite book of the month, the one that I could just sing the prices of all day, and that is Dead Remnants by Armarna Forbes. This is a YA paranormal story all about a 17-year-old girl who is killed and must then navigate the afterlife. She meets up with this group of wardens who are basically trying to keep these two factions of light and dark from killing each other, and light are not necessarily the good guys in this connotation. They just, you know, wear white robes. So on top of that, they also have to guard the this divide, this barrier essentially between the living and the other world. And on top of all of that, Ashen is trying to find her friend Jacob. So she's kind of at this time crunch because if you don't go over soon enough, you're trapped in this side forever. You can't go over at all, but also she can't leave him here. So she's uh, basically at a race for the clock. Uh, she gets caught up in this war as everyone seems to want to recruit her. There's a delightful found family that I loved. Cage is that kind of gruff, surly, but lovable old character that I adore. Um, a little bit like Red Foreman from that 70s show, almost. I will say, and someone else mentioned this in a review that I saw, um, and I realized that, yes, it needs content warnings, trigger warnings. Things get very dark. They go through the backstory of each of the wardens, and because all of them die at the end of these backstories, you know it's not going to be that great, but in a lot of cases, it is, like, battles and Native American villages being burned, and one character is killed from a very horrific hate crime that it doesn't go into, like, excruciating detail, but it does go into a little bit of detail. So if that kind of thing makes you uncomfortable, you want to give this book a wide berth, there are definitely things that will make you very much uncomfortable and very much disquieted, and you kind of just got to get through it because they are all things that really happened in American history, because yes, it is focused mostly in American history. Um, but I loved it. The ending was very bold, and I'm caught between... I want a sequel because I low-key want some things undone because it broke my heart. And, oh, it's so perfect and nice as it is. And it's like, wraps it up so neatly. I actually uh, DM'd the author on Twitter to say, uh, I just finished your book. You're a sadistic, heart-wrenching bitch. Good job. She then screenshotted that and tweeted it. So apparently, uh, that's what she's going for. And it did wrench my heart. So good job, Armarna. Good, good job. Next up were the books I read during my 24-hour readathon, because I did that for the first time, and I realized they're not that much fun. Uh, first up was Reaver by David Pilling. This is a historic novella all about uh, the border between England and Scotland and all the violence that happened there uh, during the middle of the rebellion against Elizabeth I over, you know, religious connotations. It revolves around a almost kind of Robin Hood-esque character, but not quite, he's not quite that noble, uh, who was thrown out of his own town by pissing off the wrong wealthy connected family and basically has to make his own way in the wastelands and then gets caught up in a war to boot. It is very bleak. It is very dire. It has a nice open end that fits the t uh, that fits everything perfectly in my mind. So it's definitely one of those things where you will have to like this kind of genre to get into it. But if you like that kind of genre, you will love this. Next up, another palate cleanser book, and that was A Man of Many Talents by Deborah Simmons. This is all about, I believe, Regency era, uh, a young lord who is called to help this woman clear her house of a ghost that he thinks is a sham, but then something starts happening and he starts realizing there's something behind it, and also that he's kind of into the mistress of the house. It's your standard romance. I called the ending come a mile away. Uh, really, I mean, bad guy didn't even try to hide himself all that much. So I basically like that this was quick to read in a 24-hour readathon because gosh darn, those are stressful as I'll get out. 
Next up was my least favorite book of the month, and that was so The Psych Map Bed by Libby Hawker. This is basically the backstory of Hatshepsut, the first book focusing on her mother, Amos, and there was so much girl-on-girl -girl hate in this. Uh, both Amos and her sister, Mutnofret, are married to the same dude, Tutmos, uh, because it's ancient Egypt, and that's what you did then. But they're literally competing with each other the entire time for this dude's affection when they live in a world where these kind of multiple marriages are standard. So, like, y'all should know this is a thing anyways. Um, and then on top of that, when Hatshepsut is born, they make this whole big thing about how she has a boy Ka. Now, in a, on its own, that kind of, like, trans... Uh, aspect of Egyptian religion could be cool. The problem is, is that it made it sound like it was because of this boy Ka that she'll grow up to be a great leader. And it was like, because she's a boy, this'll work. And it was very much that whole like, oh, she acts like a man and that's why she'll be a good leader. And I really disliked that. I love ancient Egypt and I wanted to love this because I got the tattoo and everything, but I just... This will go into an episode of the best and worst of indie books, so be on the lookout for that, and I will go rant at it at more length. Next up was yet another disappointing read for my 24-hour readathon, which might have gone into why I disliked it so much, and that is The Universal Harvester by John Darnell. This is not a horror book, like where it was shelved. This is about a man who works at a, a video rental place, and strange things end up appearing on various uh, loaned out tapes. This is in the 90s. It's set in Iowa, which is why I was interested in it, but the little pieces of film that are put on these tapes aren't really all that scary. They're not like snuff films or anything. They're just kind of weird, and on top of that, like, not a lot really happens. I did like that they talk a lot about Midwest culture and, like, how Midwest conversations go and how the the obsession with asking about your family and where they're living now and where they're working now is actually deeply rooted in this bigger aspect of not wanting to lose track of people and not wanting to feel like you're lost in a sea of, of faces. So I like that aspect, and that's the reason why I gave this a two instead of a one, because as a, apart from that, it was, like, just confusing. I just let it, like, kind of go over my head for the most part. Right, next up, I was back to reviewing right after the 24-hour readathon was done, and I read The Hunted by Louisa Elamind. This is a debut YA fantasy sci-fi. I tend to think more sci-fi, although the synopsis kind of sells it as fantasy, about four sisters with magical powers who are all separated, trying to outrun the things that killed their mother. Uh, now, I did a whole review on this, and I got Maximum Ride vibes, I also got a lot of technical issues with writing and with certain aspects of the writing not really being there, like a lot of dialogue, but not a lot of descriptions. So there are certain times where there would be like someone would do something big, but I wouldn't realize it until someone said something about it because the actual description of the action was so quick and looked over. But uh, the relationships between the sisters are really intriguing. There was a found family that didn't form as fast as the book would tell you it did like it didn't come across as forming by the time the characters were like talking about being there for each other but it did form eventually so i'll give it that i think i gave this what three stars a lot of three stars this month but if you like the maximum right type of thing it'll probably be up your alley and this is a debut so the author has got the foundation there just some work on the technical stuff and she'd be good to go and lastly, was not the last book I should have read, which should have been Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir, but that book is a little bit of a slog in the beginning, and I wanted to read another book by the end of October. So instead, I read Bless Her Dead Heart by Meg Collette. This is a southern paranormal mystery all about uh, a young woman who is dealing with some severe trauma from her past and a man she might have condemned uh, discovering a mutilated corpse of a pastor in a cemetery and a strange symbol carved into his body that leads to some very creepy otherworldly things as well as the arrival of a new strange man into the town. It's a lot of emphasis on the south. It's also a lot of emphasis on backstories. Uh, without getting too spoilery, there is very much content warnings for rape in this, so definitely be on the lookout. Um, I don't think, by my appraisal, it wasn't too graphic, but as it is a major theme of, of certain backstories, I would definitely go into this carefully. 
but I loved it. Five stars. This will probably also pop up in the best and worst of indie books, but for a good reason. I enjoyed this so much. So that is, yes, it is all of the books. I read 16 books. This video has gone on for a while and I want to keep it short. So thank you so much for coming along with me. I hope to be continue reading a lot of books and with nothing else to say, I hope you have a wonderful day and a marvelous tomorrow.